Hi everyone, I am Jason with Prometheus Lights and welcome to the long-awaited Icarus driver programming tutorial video. I should probably shorten up that name. Uh, in any case, all of my new flashlights are shipping with uh, the Icarus driver and they actually have been shipping with it a while. You may have been waiting about a year for this video, so I'm sorry about that. Oh, seriously, battery's gonna go right now? What do I do? I should have a second battery on board. Should we just press on? Let's do it. Okay, so here's the deal. Icarus driver and the new flashlights, I'm not gonna talk about all the fun and fancy features. That will be a different video that hopefully will take me less than a year to get to. So for today, we are gonna focus strictly on programming. Uh, now when you get your flashlight, it will come with two instruction cards and a little envelope. Uh, the black border card, uh, or just the general flashlight use instructions, basic operation, low battery behavior, battery installation, charging the battery, maintenance, and warnings. So we also don't need this one today. We are going to be focused on the programming card. Uh, it's actually been a while since I looked at this, so uh, it's kind of new to me, like it's new for you. So on one side, there's a programming guide, uh, and I guess just the first thing to note is there's a little table here with a bunch of different uh, percent outputs and levels. So this driver has 22 different levels that you can select from. Uh, there are basically two moonlight modes. There's like super low and sort of normal low, uh, and then all the way up to 100% full power. The standard programming uh, on the Icarus, there are basically two different mode groups that you can select from and they're sort of the default mode groups. Uh, the first mode group is a three mode configuration uh, and it's basically 2%, 12%, 70% uh, and then the second mode group which is again already programmed on the light just adds in uh, the moonlight mode so for a four mode with a moonlight low medium high. Uh, and I do want to make a special note, if you like your moonlight mode really low, like I do, the default programming is actually the second level. So if you want it even lower than what the light comes with, you can change uh, that first level to an even lower moonlight mode. Uh, all right, but before we get into that, one of the main things you need to know is the difference between a button press and a button click. And you're not going to push the button. But I am going to push the button. Why wouldn't I? Uh, most of our programming is going to be done with button presses, and that's basically activating the momentary mode. So if you just press the button a little bit, not all the way, the light will come on, and it will just stay on as long as you hold it. Uh, and this is going to be useful for us because you can cycle it quickly, which is what you need to access all the programming. If you're trying to click through, all the way, you're never gonna be able to do it fast enough. So a press is basically momentary, and a click is when you push the button and it latches on and you can hear it click. Oh, I should probably also explain my implement here. So I have uh, packing taped a fancy pantsy ping pong ball to my light, just so it's a little bit easier to visualize what's going on and I don't have to blind you by pointing the light directly at the camera and that sort of thing. So you can sort of see what's going on here. Uh, all right, what's next? Two mode groups. Oh, okay. I guess this is sort of feature. Um, but we're going to talk about it anyway because it's on the card. So let's do that. Uh, this light has digital drop protection. Uh, and what that means is normally if you bang a flashlight and the battery moves far enough that it actually disconnects, uh, breaks the connection between the battery and the driver, it will think that you have pressed the button and it will shift modes. So basically this has a timer built into it so a millisecond disconnect will essentially be ignored. So you can bang the light. Here, we might as well do it. Put it on a reasonable level. So right now I'm on medium and so if I hit the tail of the light which drives the battery down and away from the battery terminal contact on a normal light that's going to cause a mode change. On this light, Sorry for the loudness, but you can see that it has not changed modes. 
Uh, this light also has built-in thermal protection, and this is actually something that's user adjustable, which we will talk about in a minute. Um, so it comes set to a default level, but you can actually choose from a range, or you can turn it off entirely. I don't recommend that, uh, but if you're a power user who doesn't like a nanny and you just want like full power all the time, you can have that, but be aware the thermal protection is there for thermal protection so you don't overheat the light and damage it. Uh, mode memory. This light supports three different types of mode memory. No memory. Uh, I guess what we would call classic memory, which it remembers whatever the last mode is that you were on. Uh, and the useful but confusing hybrid memory, which will remember the last mode that you're on, but the next time you change modes, it will default to the lowest again. And that's, that's actually the memory scheme that I use because when I'm changing modes, usually I don't want to accidentally get a big blast of light. Um, so whatever mode I'm in, I know I can press the button twice and it's always going to start in low. And then I can cycle through to wherever I need that to be. Uh, the other thing that you should be aware of is what I call the direct access mode. So if you double press the button, sort of like you're double clicking a mouse, you will get 100% power. So the normal high mode for both of the default mode groups is 70% which I believe is, yeah, that's 70%. Uh, it basically jumps from 70 to 100. Honestly, for 80% of the time, 70% is plenty of light. The additional output that you get between 70 and 100 to the human eye is not incredibly substantial. If you do want a quick blast, you can double press. And so actually the, the useful way to use this is actually, okay, so... I'm on low right now, but I can go directly to full power by double pressing. And so that's all the way on. And then if I want to keep this mode on, I just push the button all the way and click it and it'll stay on. Now, when I turn it off, it's going to go back to whatever, well, I guess I was using low before, right? So the direct access mode, it actually doesn't remember when you use it. So I can be using my low mode and then all of a sudden I want a bunch of light. I'll double press, I'll get full power. You know, I'll see whatever it is I want to see, turn it off, and then it just goes back to low. And so if I'd been in some other mode like medium or high, it would have gone back to medium or high from the, the direct access mode. Okay, enough chit-chat. Let's get right into it. Oh, you know what I forgot to mention? Uh, and I should have mentioned this at the top of the show, but the whole reason I developed the Icarus driver as one of the most hotly contested things in the flashlight universe is basically what the best setup is for a flashlight. You know, how many modes does it have? How bright are they? How, how are they spaced? Which order are they in? And so with Icarus, it's fully user programmable. I don't have to decide for you. You get to decide on your own how you want to use the light. And that's pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, wow, there are a lot of different functions on this page. Um, I guess the first thing to start with is you need eight fast presses to get into the programming mode. And then when you get into the programming mode, that's indicated by a slow blink. So we're just going to show you that first. The presses do have to be fast. I think it's less than half a second in between, which is doable. I don't get it every time, but again, it's made that way to prevent accidental activation. So let's go ahead and do that. Eight quick presses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And yes, I do find it useful to count out loud. So now you can see the light is blinking and this says, I am ready for your next input. Uh, so the, I guess we'll just go through the functions in order. Uh, there is a mode lock, which actually I like to use if I'm handing somebody the flashlight and I want them to be impressed with how bright it is instead of picking it up and then pushing the button and being like, well, that's not very bright. Uh, I'll switch it to high. Uh, there's high. And then you do eight quick presses plus one, according to this little card, to lock the current mode. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. And that fast blink says, I have confirmed uh, your input. And then so no matter what I do to it, I'm only going to get high mode because it's locked on high. And so you could set it to low or whatever you wanted. Uh, if you're in a situation where you only wanted moonlight, you didn't want to take the risk of a high mode coming on, you can lock the light in moonlight. So now to unlock it, you just do the same thing, 8 plus 1. Uh, I also want to note, 
when you're starting out programming, sometimes it's useful to actually write down the button presses that you're going to use. So, you know, if I wanted to change something more complicated, like, uh, you know, adding a strobe mode, you know, this is eight presses plus four presses plus two presses. Um, just go ahead and write that down. And it's easier to do if you basically have a little roadmap that you can follow and you don't have to be like, wait, where is it on the card? Was it four? Was it five? Um, anyway, I'm going to unlock this. So eight plus one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's ready for input one. The fast blinks confirm that it's ready. And now I've got all my modes back. The, the confirmation, if you get two fast blinks, that means it accepted whatever your input was. If you get six blinks, a whole bunch of blinks, that means whatever you did, the light doesn't understand what's going on and it has not changed anything. Okay, to switch mode groups, um, this is one of the most useful ones. Um, I, I have my mode groups set up a little bit differently. I've customized them. Um, and I don't change them a lot, but I find like a few times a year, I either like to play with it or I just you know, decide that, oh, maybe I'll try out you know, a different scheme that's going to work a little better. So right now I've got three modes, uh, low, medium, high. So if I do eight plus two, uh, which is the switch mode group option, I'll do eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ready for input, one, two, two fast blinks. And now I don't even know if you can see that on camera, but so I have this set to super low moonlight on the first one. And then I don't know, I basically have two really low modes. So there's a low, uh, uh, 70, and then 100. And then again, if I want full power, oh, sorry, that was only 70. If I want full power, if I want to get 100, double press, right? Uh, okay, to set brightness for the current mode. This is the one that's a little tricky. Um, and I think it's really the only exception and so, <clears throat> well, we'll just dive into it. So let's see, what brightness do I want to change? I'm going to go back to my three mode setting so it's a little easier to figure out. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Confirmed. All right, and I should be back to three modes. One, two, three. So let's say I want to change my lowest mode. Um, so right now this is on... I guess level two, which is the second moonlight mode. So then the, now that I'm on this level, this is the one that I'll be changing. So I just shut the light off. And when I go to make changes, it will be to this level. Uh, <clears throat> and what should we do with it? I don't know, it doesn't really matter. We'll just go for it. So this is gonna be eight plus three. Uh, and on the third press, you hold the button and the light will ramp up 22 levels and it will ramp down 22 levels. When you get to the level you want, you just let go of that press, then you have to press it again, which is the weird part. And the reason that you have to press it again is the driver needs power to set the memory. Um, so most of the time on that last press, you'll get the double blank, uh, and then that's it. You're good. But specifically with changing the brightness, when you get to the level you want, you let go and you have to press it in again in order to set the memory. Again, the driver needs power from the battery, so that's why you have to turn it on again. Uh, all right, so we're changing the first level. We'll do eight plus three plus hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. All right, so there we go. Now it's starting to ramp. And again, there are 22 levels. So if you have something in mind, it's useful to write down what number that you want to try to get to. Otherwise, you can kind of get lost. Uh, and when it hits 22, it pauses. For a little bit and when it gets to level one it's also going to pause so let's see i'm going to set this on the lowest moonlight mode oh we're not even going to be able to see that with the ping pong ball so i'm just going to pick something random so i'm going to let go and then press it in again let go press it in double blank to confirm that it's set so now we'll go through the modes and so i think hopefully we will see that the the low is a different setting. Uh, I guess maybe we should jump down to factory reset. Uh, if you get things messed up and the light is working weird and you can't figure out what's going on, factory reset is basically the eject handle 
uh, it will reset everything to the default. Um, I don't actually want to do that to this light, which I should have thought of because this is a light I actually use. I don't want to erase my modes, um, but this is 8 plus 10. So again, what you should really do is probably practice with uh, 8 plus 1 and 8 plus 2. Uh, that would be the lock mode and switch mode functions just to get familiar with getting into the programming mode with eight presses and sort of what the pacing is like. Um, but yeah, if you, if, you get, if you get lost, just factory reset and start over. Okay, so setting a, the mode type. There are basically four mode types. Um, the first one is constant brightness, which is just normal flashlight function, the light turns on. Uh, there are strobe, beacon, and SOS options, which I don't really use, but if that's something you would like, you can add it in. Um, so, I don't know, why don't we take the lowest mode that I have here, which is this mode, so now I'm going to shut it off. Uh, and I'm going to change this mode to SOS, because strobe is going to make everybody freak out on the camera because it'll be all stroby. Uh, okay, so SOS is 8, 4, 4. So I'll try to remember that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ready for input. 1, 2, 3, 4. Ready for input. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there we go. SOS mode. Cool. So again, if I scroll through, the first one's going to be SOS and then constant brightness and then constant brightness and back to SOS. Uh, yeah, so that works. Now, I don't really want this SOS mode, so I'm going to delete it. You can add and delete modes. Uh, deleting a mode is straightforward. It deletes it. When you add a mode, it will add it after the mode that you're on, uh, which can actually get a little bit confusing sometimes, but just so you know that when you add a mode, it's going to add it after the one that you're currently on. So to delete this mode, when I shut the light off, uh, this is light actually has off time memory, um, which I guess I don't really need to get into that. If you want to know about off time and on time memory, we'll talk about that uh, in the features video. Um, okay, delete a mode, which is 852. So we'll try to do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ready for input. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ready for input. 1, 2. Confirmed. All right. So now I should have two modes, medium and high. Uh, so now where this gets a little bit tricky, if I want to add, <laughs> if I want to add a mode that is going to be first in line, you can't really do that. Sorry, couldn't figure out how to make that work. Um, so if like I want to add the moonlight mode back in, I would have to add a mode after medium. And then I would have to change that mode to medium and then go back and change the first one to moonlight. Again, it's a little bit clunky, but it's sort of what we got to work with. When you are adding a mode, the mode you add will be the same as the mode you were on, if that makes sense. Um, so right now I'm set up with three modes. So if I go to low and I want to add a mode, I'm going to shut it off. And so I will add another low mode. Uh, and the sequence for adding a mode is 851. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One. So double blink to confirm. So now I should have mm, two low modes. There we go. And then medium and then high. So two low, medium, high. It worked. Uh, the other thing that is very important that I want to add is that when you are selecting your mode memory, uh, so the light has two mode groups that you can set up however you want. When you add memory, that memory is specific to that group. So say you could have your three mode group set up with no memory and your four mode group set up with classic memory. Um, so that's kind of cool that you can, the, the mode, well, the mode memory setting is not global, so it's applied specifically to each mode group. Uh, and I also think I forgot to mention that you can have up to seven modes in each group, which is way too many, but hey, if that's what you're into, you can have seven modes. Um, so I think where the last video cut off, I was actually going to try to set the mode memory. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, 
let's say low, medium, high. So medium, I'm not sure what I have right now. So I have it set to classic memory, I believe. So it came back on medium, classic memory. If I shift again, should go to high. So that works. So low, medium, oh, well, now I have two low modes, but there's high. Um, so let's change this to no memory. So again, if, since it has memory right now, if I press it again, it comes on high. So let's go ahead and delete the memory. <coughs> Excuse me, or rather set it to no memory. So that's gonna be eight, six, one. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. All right, so now I should have no memory. So that was set on medium. If I turn it on again, if I had memory, it would come on again medium. Now it's going to come on low. And then I'll get one more low mode because I have two. And then high. And again, I was on high. If I shut it off, if it had memory, it would come back on high. Since I don't, it's going to come on low. It's just going to keep cycling every time. Well, I guess the last thing is temperature setting, which I touched on a little bit before. But just to be more specific, that is uh, eight, seven, and then some number that represents uh, the, the temperature in degrees centigrade. And so if you look at your little card, uh, eight, seven plus one would be turning off the thermal control, which again, I don't recommend. Um, you can overheat the light, it'll get too hot to touch, and it's generally just not good for it. So basically what will happen is the light will not ramp down the output when it gets hot. You will just get whatever output you have selected for however long. Um, and actually one of the big risks with overheating the light is not really damaging the electronics, but if you overheat the shrink wrap on the battery, that can actually pull away and split. Uh, and at that point, if the shrink wrap splits, you're risking shorting out the battery. Uh, and with a lithium ion, which has a ton of energy inside, what you do not want to do uh, is release that energy in an uncontrolled way which can happen if your wrapper is damaged. Um, so the default setting is 60 degrees, which is not really a direct measurement. There's a temperature sensor in the microcontroller, which is on the driver. So we're not really measuring the temperature of the LED or the body. We're actually measuring the temperature of the driver. And I landed on 60 degrees basically because it felt like, you know, after you ran the light for 10 or 15 minutes straight um, and it ramps the power down at that point, the amount of power that it is using, well, the light will still get very hot, but it won't be too hot to touch, for example, and it won't uh, melt the battery wrapper. But so the, your options are 40, 50, 60 degrees centigrade, which is what the light comes set on. And then there's 70 and 80 if you want to run it a little bit hotter, or if you're like out in winter weather where you're getting a lot of cooling on the light, it's fine to run it a little bit hotter. Anyway, that should do it for now. Please let me know down in the comments uh, if I missed anything, if I should make anything a little bit more clear. Uh, and yeah, thanks very much for tuning in. Thanks for your patience uh, on the programming video. I hope this was helpful. Uh, we'll see you next time.